Hello friends, I'm so glad you're here today. This summer, we're learning about confidence. Now, confidence is learning to see yourself the way that God sees you. And in today's story, we're gonna see how God brought his people um, from wandering in the desert for so long, he actually brought them into his promised land. But when they got to the promised land, there was already people living there. Uh, and they were very afraid of the Israelites because they knew that God was on their side. So these people, they hid in their largest city, Jericho, uh, because they knew the Israelites wouldn't be able to overcome them from Jericho. But not to worry. God sent an angel to the Israelites and to their leader, Joshua. He told them not to be afraid and that he had a plan for them to take over Jericho and enter into the promised land. Now, this plan was a risky plan. It wasn't a typical battle plan you would see, but Joshua made the decision to trust God despite the plan not being what he expected. Joshua could have decided not to trust God. He could have decided to, to go his own way. But as you'll learn in our story today, we see that God's plan is always the best plan because he knows all the outcomes and he has ordained everything to happen before it even happens, before we know what's going on. And so just like Joshua, we can make the choice today to trust God and trust that his plan is best. Let's pray and ask God to help us with that today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this story, the story of Joshua and his faith. God, I pray that you would help make us into people who are like Joshua, who trust you um, and trust that your plan is what's best. Even when it's not easy, God, I pray that you would give us the strength to trust you. We love you and we thank you for everything that you are and everything that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, friends.
the best around. Not gonna be what you good to do. Hey everybody, my name is Graham, and today I'm following in the groundbreaking footsteps of my ancestors. I'm making a mixtape. You see, back in olden times, when someone wanted to listen to music, they needed one of these cassette tapes. And if you were fortunate enough to have one of these dual cassette recorders with high speed dubbing, you could put up to 90 minutes of your favorite songs onto one rad mixtape. I'm making this mixtape for my friend Erica, who's been running a lot of 5Ks lately. The Eye of the Tiger. And I'm only picking super encouraging songs, that way Erica will have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be simpler just to make a playlist that Erica could listen to on her phone? Maybe, but this is all a part of the plan. My plan is to give this mixtape to Erica so she can listen to it while she's running. She probably doesn't have a tape player, so, so she'll borrow mine. And if she carries this thing around with her everywhere, she'll build up arm strength. Oh, I didn't say it was a good plan. Oh man. Another one bites the dust. Sometimes plans don't work out the way you expect. But as you'll see in today's story, sometimes there's a bigger and better plan. Oh, gotta switch to side two, I guess. How did people even survive back then? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Joshua, chapters 5 and 6. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert. At last, they reached the land that God had promised them. Joshua led them to the edge of the rushing Jordan River. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was a beautiful chest that reminded the Israelites that God was with them. As soon as the priests step into the Jordan, it will stop flowing. Sure enough, as soon as the foot of the first priest touched the edge of the river, the waters parted. God's people crossed on dry land, just as God had led them through the Red Sea 40 years before. God did this so that all the nations on earth would know that he is powerful. Soon after, the Amorites and Canaanites living in the land had heard what God had done. Fearful, they retreated back to their towns, including the high-walled city of Jericho. Oh, great. Like, how do we fight them now? God will show us the way. That evening, Joshua left camp and snuck toward Jericho. The walls loomed impossibly strong. So tall. As he turned, Joshua saw a man standing nearby holding a sword. Who are you? Uh, are you on our side or the side of our enemies? I have come as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua knelt down face to the ground. What message does my Lord have for me? Take off your sandals. The place you are on is holy ground. Joshua tugged off his shoes. I have handed Jericho over to you. Joshua listened carefully as the Lord delivered a message, a battle plan unlike any other. Wow, uh, okay, uh, we'll do it, Lord. Joshua called for the priests. Get the Ark of the Covenant, and I need seven of you to march in front of the Ark with trumpets. Sorry, just warming up. <laughs> Joshua gathered the army too. Time to move out. <laughs> like, do we get to attack now? March around the city. Just, like, go in circles? Some of you march ahead of the Ark of the Lord, and the rest of you march behind. Can we at least shout and stuff? Hey, Jericho, you guys smell like cheese! Don't give a war cry or raise your voices until the day I tell you to shout. But the priests must blow their trumpets. Forward! March! The entire army, including the priests, marched one time around Jericho, just as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Now can we get them? Back to camp, men. We march again tomorrow. 
The next morning, the Israelites marched around the city once again. And then on day three, once again on day four, not to mention day five, and once again on day six. We march again at sunrise. Uh, I have blisters. At dawn on the seventh day, the army and priests formed their strange parade once more. But this time, once they finished marching around the city one time, Joshua called out. Keep marching. Again? My feet are killing me. The Lord has told me we must march around the city seven times today. On the seventh time around, the priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Now shout! The Lord has given you the city. As the shouts of the Israelites rang out in the clear morning air, something incredible happened. The massive walls of Jericho began to tremble. The gates shivered and quaked. Jagged cracks ran through the heavy stones. Rocks began to tumble from the tops of the walls. Little rocks, large stones, giant boulders, until at last the walls collapsed, crashing in on themselves. The ground quaked and plumes of dust burst into the air. As the air cleared, the Israelites stared in amazement. The city of Jericho stood wide open. Take the city! With nothing standing in their way, the Israelites charged right in. That day, they completely defeated the city of Jericho. God was with Joshua, and he became well known everywhere in the land. When God told Joshua to take over the city of Jericho, Joshua probably thought of a battle plan. And I bet his battle plan didn't involve marching around the city wall for a week blowing trumpets. But Joshua followed God, and the Israelites took the city. He had confidence that God's plan was bigger and better. And that's not the only time God proved his plan was better. When Jesus, God's son, died on the cross, Jesus' disciples had to wonder, what is God thinking? Then in three days, when Jesus came back to life, it all became clear. God's plan is always better. The truth is, none of us know what the future holds. Your family might have to move out of the neighborhood or out of the state. You might get sick or break a bone. You might not get put on the team you tried out for. But when things don't go according to your plan, that's when you need to remind yourself, God's got you. You may not always know what God's plan is, but keep following him and have confidence that his plan is bigger and better. That's the one thing to remember today. God's plan is the best plan. My plan to make a mixtape for Erica is not the best plan. But it's still a lot of fun. Ah, oh. Oh no, it's unraveled. Oh wait, no worries. I've got an idea. Huh? Just like my ancestors. I'll see you next time.